This is a living area. Giving us a tour, developer Michael Sager is very open about delays to First Street lofts. His reasoning? Despite the taxpayer seed funds, sufficient money wasn't readily available. Contract negotiations took too long, and the real estate collapse halted construction. There are many projects that are underway now that have taken years past the groundbreaking or years past the announced time of getting started. So the fact is we're durable and we're still here. The group in charge of handing over the $1.3 million Envision dollars, the Tulsa Development Authority, has given Sager five extensions on the project, including one granted in October of this year. With the downturn in the economy and um, just the uh, construction prices, we just wanted to have a little patience with him. But not everyone is so patient. I'd like for, for somebody to give them a good, good excuse. Uh, why that's not done. Private investigator Eric Cullen looked into spending at First Street Lofts years ago when hired by concerned citizens. They couldn't financially sustain the investigation, but Cullen says he learned enough. It didn't appear to me or my clients that uh, any of it was being spent for that building. We poured through thousands of documents, including draw reports submitted by Sager to the TDA showing what he spent the money on, little of which we found matched the original proposal. $30,975 was budgeted for Michael and Patricia Sager, listed as construction manager and administration, but more than double was paid out, $83,000, plus $46,065 to other construction managers. That's a quadruple of an original budget of what he had intended on paying for himself according to the proposal. Um, was that a red flag? It certainly was. TDA Director O.C. Walker admits there were several red flags. He explained to you what he would be spending the $1.3 million on and what the $1.3 million would be going towards. Correct. And he listed in his proposal to the Housing Committee that his $1.3 million would go towards adequate parking and an improved indoor garage area. Correct. Is that done? That's not complete. And neither is the elevator lobby or all insulated walls. The lofts do not have the new dishwashers, stoves, refrigerators. Is that correct for me to say that when somebody submits a proposal, that's what's expected to be spent of the money? That is correct. But however, I want to make it clear that the $1.3 million was not to cover the, the cost of the entire project. It was gap financing. So it's supposed to help them kind of just bridge a gap to complete the overall development. The $1.3 million was not to fund the entire project. Sager says the documents outlining costs were simply a guideline. We weren't committing to 5,000 feet of black tile and 2,000 feet of white tile. Okay. So in this case... They didn't require that. No. Then another setback this summer when American Home Mortgage Company filed for foreclosure, saying Sager defaulted on an $850,000 loan, a loan we found was a sticking point in negotiations. Documents show before the lofts were ever approved, a committee chose to give Sager the taxpayer seed money based on low existing debt on the property, $200,000. But it wasn't until negotiations started that Sager revised the contract by handwriting in an $850,000 debt. In an email, the then economic development director wrote, an amount over $200,000 was not on our radar screen. I just hope he can make the payments. Since we never knew about the mortgage, I think how he spends the money is going to be his call. We all hope it is on the building. And later, how do we know he can even make a first mortgage payment? Sager sold this deal on a low first mortgage. We are just trying to get this puppy closed. TDA's attorney, Jot Hartley, believes many decisions were based on high hopes. I can't judge whether they were acting from their heart or their head. But my review and analysis of it leads me to conclude that they were acting prudently. Then three years after all money had been dispersed to Sager, the city assumes more debt on the property, increasing the $850,000 debt limit to $2.5 million. The amendment, uh, I would assume, was required in order to make maybe the best of a bad situation that everyone found themselves in. A situation that leaves Tulsans like Eric Cullen and his former clients offended, frankly, as a taxpayer.
Sager believes despite setbacks, First Street lofts will open as early as the spring of 2012. He recently redesigned the loft project, adding more units for a more affordable price for renters. Believe it or not, it's alive and well. Court documents show the foreclosure is still pending. Sager says there is no doubt in his mind the project will be completed in a timely manner. We'll keep following the story and the completion of other vision-funded projects. Aaron Christie, 2 News works for you.